Welcome to my Swiss tour. My name is Ronja Phoenix. I'm originally from Finland, but I've been in Ireland now for three years. Um, my street is this social enterprise to help homeless people to find find employment and uh, some skills, storytelling skills and self-confidence. Just being treated as a human instead of like just street rubbish that sometimes people see you as. And being on a Maestri's program, it's a really nice thing to have people to talk to you like you're a person and treating you with respect and uh, kindness. So that's a very wonderful thing about my streets. Uh, originally I'm from Finland and I grew up in a small place called Imatra. Um, I'm autistic. Um, I wasn't diagnosed until I was an adult, but I had a bit of a challenging childhood. And um, I was 14 when I got into the children's refuge for abused children. And then I moved to live with my aunt and uncle. When I first came here, I rented a, a little cottage um, and I had one year fixed term lease on it. And then six months in, one day my landlord comes to me and say like, okay, I've sold the cottage, uh, the property is vacant. Um, you need to be out by Thursday. And that was on a Monday, so I had four days to get out. Um, so in that way, it was like, okay, I moved to live in my, packed my stuff in a shipping container storage. And then um, I lived in my car with my two cats and my two dogs for a bit over two months. There were some very kind people who were passing by and bringing water and books to read and you know toiletries and stuff. Um, but it was rough and eventually I did lose the job as a waitress because they say like it doesn't look right when you know like people serving their food is crawling into sleep in a car with two cats and two dogs. So yeah, cost me my job there. Because I'm a bit quirky and out in the world by myself, I have, uh, I think it's because of the autism, it's very hard for me to make proper relationships and connections with people. So I'm an easy target for people to take advantage of and push down because they see me alone and it's like nobody's gonna help you. Like that is what my previous landlord said, like, you know, like, uh, you know, get out by Thursday, nobody's going to help you. A thousand years ago, people didn't bathe that much, but Vikings were very particular about their hygiene. So they would actually wash themselves once a week, which was like seemed quite a lot. And they would groom their hair and braid their hair and make themselves look pretty, men and women. Um, so there are records in Ireland as well, that husbands wanted to lock away their wives because the nice smelling beautiful Vikings were seducing their women. <laughs> so there, there was a little bit of that going on from there. In my early 20s I had a bit of an existential crisis and I've never believed in any sort of deity myself. Um, so I started looking into all sorts of religions around the world and um, there's so many gods and beliefs to choose from but then I found the Viking gods and goddess Freya in particular and she was superhero back in the day and she was very awesome and she was like this very unapologetic strong female character if she wanted something she found a way to get it and all the other gods or Odin might tell her that no, you're not allowed to do that or you're not supposed to, you know, that's bad. But she had them wrapped around her little finger. Um, so I started to, I got interested in goddess Freya and the Viking mythology. So when it came time on the My Streets tour to make my own tour, and I thought like, well, I'm kind of into ghost stories or, you know, the family memorial was quite interesting. But then I had this unused knowledge of the Viking mythology that led me into having a, a Viking history tour where I can actually tell some of my 
sagas and share some of my knowledge that I don't get to talk about very often. Very different from Christian gods, for example, because the Viking gods, they had their own problems, so they didn't know you. You have to like, if whatever you do in life, you have to try to impress the gods, so the gods will notice you. You couldn't just assume that, of course, God knows me, because they were busy, they had stuff to do. It took a lot of uh, care and craftsmanship to build the proper dragon ships with the dragon or some sort of fearsome creature at the front. They were always at the front of the fleet. So when the Vikings were traveling in the new places, the dragon ships were in the front. So dragon ships were the first thing that people saw. And then they just kind of like always drew pictures with Vikings with the dragon ships. I, I talked to anybody I meet about how uh, shocking it is, yeah. how badly projected the, the tenants are in Ireland. Yeah. Uh, because after I became homeless, my landlord was actually court ordered to pay 5,369 euros damages for illegal eviction. Yes. But he has never paid one euro. I hope you enjoyed the tour <laughs> and learned something. I learned a lot. <laughs> yeah, Different you guys are freezing. Uh, I am actually, I'm, I'm new here, so I've learned a lot and I've kind of learned a lot about all the different landmarks that they have. And it's, yeah. it was really interesting how you explained it as well. It was very interesting. Cool. I had a lot of fun. Thank you. Cool. I'm 45 years old. I don't know how to make friends because I never learned that skill as a child. I'm quite happy to spend time with people and, you know, participate in all that. But I can't find people who want to hang out with me just to hang out. People are always saying, like, oh, homeless crisis is because of there's not enough houses and that um, things. But I think one of the big contributing factors of homelessness is that landlords are not getting puni like penalties of breaking the law. Like they court orders them to make damages, but they don't actually make to pay. And landlords seem to know this, that there is no penalty for breaking a residential law. So they can just do whatever they want. They can throw people on the streets. They don't care uh, because there is no penalty for it. And um, that is something that doesn't make sense to anybody. It doesn't make sense to me. Um, so people find it very hard to believe that surely that cannot be true. But that is what is happening. I know, no, I know this only because it's happened to me. Um, so I, I can understand how it is very hard for other people to believe it because it is so scary. It is so scary that no tenant is safe. There is no safety.